Dave, Bill, and Carmen, the morning cruise here at the Joy FM. We're talking with Brandon Lake this morning. Before we get too far, we talked about your hair. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about this right here? Let's go. Yes, we can. Uh, this is Brandon sitting comfortably on the couch on the cover of Charleston Home and Design, November or, or summer 2023. Yeah. November is because my glasses aren't that great. Um, How so good is that outfit, though? That is... It's, it's like strong, right? You're this is model <laughs> Brandon going with the the animal print. I do have one question. Does your wife often have to tell you to keep your feet off the coffee table? All the time. Because there's at okay, least here, two okay. pictures here's in this. Here's the thing. I always have my feet up on the coffee table, but my favorite thing to do is p to put a pillow on the coffee table and then put my feet on that. And she. She's so about pillows, and I'm pretty sure like our pillows cost more than you know yes. we spend on our children, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm always like doing that, and then I kind of forget, and so she'll come into the room, she'll be like, "Get your feet off my pillow! <laughs> right, you're gonna ruin it." You know, I'm like, "We got dogs all throughout the house, but you're concerned with my feet on a pillow." <laughs> you we know? spend a lot of money on pillows, just so you know. Yeah. They can get, they can, they can be pricey, but they, they add to the home. Oh, they totally yeah. do. Yeah. 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 I, d I did notice that there are at least two of the pictures in that particular series where you've got feet on the coffee table, one playing guitar. Uh -huh. But the other thing I noticed is, I mean, there's a reason that you're on home and design magazine. This is a bougie place. <laughs> and the only other person I know in Christian music who's been featured because of the home design is Crowder. Which, oh my gosh. And he can't take details. any credit for that whatsoever. Oh no. His That's wife all his is wife. a genius. Okay. So, so are, are you in the same boat? Um, my house doesn't have, um, uh, is nowhere near Crowder's. Uh, Brittany, my wife is really great at, um, at, at designing things, but I will say, and she would say this, I promise, um, in all humility, I think I am, the designer okay. um and but i've i've had to learn i did some really weird stuff in our in past <laughs> homes like y'all one time i went to a <laughs> one time i went to a thrift store and i found i found a old like restaurant booth okay i brought it home my wife mm -hmm. is like what are you doing it was a like corner booth too and so i put it in the corner and then i took off the cushions i went to a fabric place and that refabric fabricated upholstery, yeah. upholstery. Yeah. 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 yeah so and then and i don't know why i picked this print it was so ugly <laughs> and reupholstered it and then it was like you know got the job done and then i kind of looked back at it and i was like this is the worst idea i've ever <laughs> had people would come like friends would come over and be like dude what <laughs> is that is not cool you know uh so i've grown but um yeah we were super honored to be in this magazine um you know, being in my, our city that we love so much. And it was really just like an opportunity for us to share our story. Mm -hmm. And um, we bought this house out in the country. One, because I travel so much, it's really good for my mental health. Mm -hmm. And because when you're on the road, your adrenaline is just going mm -hmm. nonstop. And I'll, I would come home and, and to learn the hard way that you really tank. You, you It's like going from a mountaintop to a valley pretty quick. And so I needed a place that I could be, uh, I could detox within 24 hours. I'm just like... Okay, I feel like myself again. And um, so we bought this house out in the country and um, the cutest home. And we have a few acres and now my favorite thing. I would have said I was a city boy. I grew up a country boy and the country boy came back alive mm -hmm. in me. And so now my favorite thing is like cut the grass for two hours. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we just love it. Got to share our heart for hosting people who are burnt out in ministry, artists who are burnt out. We, uh, we try to bring people in and we call it our house of miracles. Mm -hmm. Um, and around, around the same time that I was coming out with that song and that record, mm -hmm. God was giving us a vision for what me and my wife's ministry could be. And, and that's, um, hosting. And again, we, we, I could talk all day about this cause we have vision, you know, five, 10 years out from how, uh, from where we're at right now. But on that property, we actually want to expand, build a mega home, not so that we can enjoy a, you know, ball and house, but so that we can house five to six couples at one time and do retreats mm. and, um, and give people an opportunity to like heal and be restored mm. and be revived mm -hmm. like Brittany and I have experienced in times, you know, so. You're a preacher's kid and PK. I have to say, mm -hmm. oh yeah, <clears throat> it, it makes me, you know, preacher's kids, you got one of two types. <laughs> You've got the ones the that, real bad that, ones. that are real good. <laughs> 
and then you've got the others. Yeah. And I think probably the percentage is higher of the others uh-huh. mm-hmm. than the ones that are real good. So when I, I'm, I'm sitting across from, uh, we've already talked about the hair. I mean, you've, you've, you're wearing a Harley Davidson t-shirt. <laughs> so I already you, look like a bad you've one. You've got a biker look. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, I'm, I'm leaning toward, you okay. know, way, wayward pastor son who's right. come back to the... <laughs> right, so, right. You know, we could go I'm all the of these. Son. <laughs> so what does dad say about the, okay. the look? Uh, the look. Okay, that's interesting. I would say he, he... There's been moments where my mom and my dad, mm-hmm. you know, when I started getting tattoos and all that, they're always supportive just of me um they're like i i I don't know that i would have chosen that for you but um you know i'm watching my mom she's like but um well it is pretty uh, they did a a good job you know and uh now my mom and and my dad i think they love my look and it's especially as other people you know have kind of affirmed like oh Mm -hmm. that's cool looking dude like Mm -hmm. he's he's doing him you know Mm -hmm. and i just love art so Mm -hmm. much like i'm not trying to look cool it's just like i fell in love with with uh tattoo imagery and um and so yeah i just started collecting these pieces from some of my favorite artists and and obviously so many have different meanings and you know um are are kind of a stone of remembrance right Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, like songs can be Mm -hmm. but um yeah my dad um they're, they're they're supportive but um yeah. Uh, Were you one of those pastors? So, kids? okay. So that's what's crazy is I look like a dude that I've had people come up to me and go, man, you look like you got a, a strong testimony. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what does that mean? You know, I'm like, obviously I know what they mean. I'm like, dude, I do. I do have a strong testimony. I grew up in the church. Mm. I grew up with the most loving and still have the most amazing parents. My parents are my heroes. Mm. And, you know, like I've had a few moments, but like I never strayed. Mm -hmm. Like I've stayed connected in the church. And I think that's why I can stand Mm -hmm. here today and, and so much, you know, experiencing the goodness of God and the grace of God. And I have a beautiful family and I get to minister all over the world and have songs that are reaching millions of people. And I'm so humbled by that. I can't believe it. But I think there's a connection between the influence and my level of commitment and surrender to the Lord and to the church. And, you know, a a tree planted by streams of water, Mm -hmm. like is a tree that's going to flourish. And I Mm -hmm. think that that, like, again, I've had my moments, you know, uh, but I think I've, I've tried to be as faithful as I can. Um, but I remember you, as soon as you started talking about this, it reminded me of a story. Um, and this goes to show that it's kind of everyone's perspective on PKs is mm-hmm, like, oh, right. they're the worst. <laughs> and I had this teacher, and I hope you're listening, Miss Campbell. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Campbell, uh, maybe sixth grade. Can't remember. I was cutting up in class, you know, but like just like an average kid, you know, just like any other kid, just whatever, kind of got in trouble. And, uh, and she took me outside and she said, those PKs, y'all are always the worst. Mm. And it was like, it's crazy to me that I still remember that, even Mm. though I, I kind of like, uh, dismissed it. Cause I'm like, I I know that's not true about me. I'm Mm. like, I'm just being a kid and it's still like, it stuck with me. Mm. And there have been moments where I've had to go, you know what? No. No, like I, and I actually remember going like, you know what? I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, um, in a lot of ways, I'm still trying to to (laughs) show Miss Campbell that, you know, uh, yeah, you don't have to be what people um, speak over you or, or perceive, you know, just Mm -hmm. because you were uh, born in this family or your, your father does this, your mother does this, you know, it's like, you know, I get to choose, Mm -hmm. I get my, my own person, I get to respond and, uh, and, you know, um, follow the Lord how, yeah. So, Mm. yeah. I think sometimes you're, um, uh, as, as one, not one of those preacher's kids, right. But having the look, I think you surprise a lot of people. And when I talk about surprising a lot of people, you surprised a lot of people at CMB momentum during the acoustic cafe (laughs) by taking a praise song, which typically is presented and sounds a lot like you're dressed today. It's a rocker. Right, right. And you did it acoustically. Yeah. And you said one of the reasons you did it acoustically was to show worship leaders that it can be done yeah. as an acoustic praise and worship song. Yeah, I mean, um, 
you know, it's easy to forget that the majority of churches don't have a massive sound system, Mm -hmm. don't have, um, you know, or or like every other other week they're like, oh, we we just don't have a drummer this week. Like we got to do what we got to do. And like, you don't need much to worship God. In fact, you don't need anything. You've got everything inside of you to be able to offer, you know, a, um, a, a, a sacrifice of praise and, um, and I think in that moment, um, yeah, I think really because I'm a local, still a local worship leader, like that's, it's really like what my heart burns for is resourcing the church. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always going to do artisty kind of songs and I always want to push the envelope. This next record I'm coming out with is the most diverse thing I've ever created. Uh, songs of every kind and every genre. Um, but I always want to make sure I'm, I'm helping resource the church. Um, you know, I've always I've been a local worship leader since I was a young boy. And so um, I know what it's like. I know the struggles. I know mm-hmm. set up, tear down church. Um, I know your drummer calls out sick. I know like you got to pivot, you know, and or the sound system shuts down. Power goes off. It's like I want to know at any moment I can, you know, I can still lead people well if all I have is an acoustic guitar and. And so I thought it was a cool opportunity to show that yeah. song. You're going to hear it, you know, on the radio, rock and roll. It's still really corporate and I think really fun to sing and anyone can sing along. But And the song yeah. we're talking about, I just want to insert really fast here because you killed it, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. The song that we're talking about is Rattle, which is in our is in our top three right. Brandon songs. But but that oh, Rattle you. was the song yeah. that, that you did. And it is a rocker. It is. It is a Acoustically rocker. or you, as you would hear it on the radio. Right. Yeah. So where did it come from? Where did Rattle come from? Uh, okay, so Rattle is Pastor Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church, uh, Chris Brown, who's a worship leader there, and myself. It was in the middle of COVID. We started it, if I'm rem- remembering correctly, we started it over Zoom. And I think the next week or a few days later, no, no, I think it was like um, a day or two later, I was driving up to Charlotte to do when everyone had to do church online, mm-hmm. like shut everything was shut down and we were doing, uh, we'd have a few people who were like, you know, had to get a COVID test, come in and we do an online service and broadcast and no one's in the room. And so we had, I think it was one of those weekends, we started writing it and it was a totally different song at first. And, uh, and there was a common theme of like the, the uh, bones of Elisha and um, we were kind of vamping on this one idea. And then the next day, I think we rewrote it and then tried it out with the band. And then I think we rewrote it again, maybe that next day. So it was like rewritten like two or three times, finally got the band together. I remember my wife was with me on the trip that we were um, workshopping it because in like Pastor Steven has so many ideas. And so we're just in it and we're running the song over and over again. And then, and then that's how like the live, live, Mm -hmm. dry bones, say the word of the Lord. You know, all that was like post writing the song, all these other ideas were started to come out just from us leading it and and trying. And then my poor wife's out there in the audience with no one, (laughs) no one else. She's just sitting out there and she's kind of looking at me hours went by and we're just like kids in like a garage essentially <laughs> like garage band just just having a blast with this song and working on it and working on it and uh and she's like I get in the car and she's like did you really have to play it that many times you know like, <laughs> like okay and um and so we just fell in love with it I, mm. I actually almost texted Pastor Stephen just the other day and was like remember that time we wrote mm. maybe all of our favorite song that mm-hmm. we've ever been a part of. So good. Right. And there's just something about it. It doesn't just speak faith. It sounds mm-hmm. like faith. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it wakes the church up. It wakes people up and reminds them that anything is possible, that God is able. And uh, I think it's like one of my, still one of my favorite things to lead of all time. Was there ever a moment while you were jamming to it that you thought to yourself, nobody is ever going to play this in church? One million percent. Man. We And here's the thing. This This is what's so cool. Um, we definitely had that moment. We looked at each other and we're like, no one is ever going to do this song except for us. And we might not even do this song (laughs) after we try it once in front of the church. And we're like, wow, what were we thinking? Mm. Uh, you know, Mm. uh, and, but we're like, you know what? Like, do you love it? Yeah, I do. I, I love it. And pastor Steven has coined this term that we use all the time. We go write for your phone first. Mm. What I mean by that is write something that you love um beyond truth obviously right truth the gospel but but like 
however that is expressed, if you love it, like follow that feeling, you know, and chase that. There's mm-hmm. a reason why if it makes me come alive, mm-hmm. like maybe it will for someone else. And so we're like, regardless of what happens with this song, we love it and we have it on our phone and we're going to listen to it. Mm-hmm. I think over the next few days, we were just listening, ba- mm-hmm. listening it over and over and over again. And so then we got the band together and then that's when they recorded the music video for it. Again, if you go back and watch it, no one's in the room except for the band. And, um, and then it was, I remember the moment where it went, number one, I think, on radio, mm-hmm. and we were like, our jaws dropped. We're just like, if any song we would have bet against, it would be this one, you know, and it's the song that goes mm-hmm. number one, like, pretty shortly after. Yeah. So, yeah, it's crazy. All so right. I, if anyone's listening out there and you're like, I don't know if my sound will ever be accepted, you know, I think that's a lie. I think God created you the way he did for a reason. You sound that way for a reason, and uh, and you have... Uh, you know, passions and, and tendencies to, to, you know, like whether it's rock and roll or if it's jazz or it's R and B or it's country, like, I mean, we need all those expressions mm-hmm. of worship, you know, someone's going to identify with that. And so it's been really cool to see this one somehow by the grace of God be accepted by the church. Here it is. It's rattle on the joy FM. Mm-hmm. 